convincing and demanding and aggressive. And you will see that illustrated in this scene uh, in the second clip I show you. But first of all, we have the illustration of um, the warrior and the star. This is Othello on the left, and this is um, Desdemona on the right, who is my, my favourite uh, female personality in all of Shakespeare, because she, has, she is so balanced, she's got everything. Um, one person is warrior-like, noble and high status, the other is devoted, humble and low, low status. Can you tell which is which? <laughs> uh, well, so you're locking your heads, why? Right. Well, because she's looking up yes. to him. Right, so, so you're saying... So he's giving the impression of um, higher status by his armour. Uh, okay, his right. right, okay, that's very interesting. Right. Okay, you say that, yeah. It does look that way, doesn't it? But I'm not quite... Yeah, but this is Shakespeare, yes? Uh, so... Keep an open mind. Watch very closely. This is a very short and brief clip. Uh. It gives me wonder, great as my contempt, see you here before me, for oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest come such calm, May the wind blow to let us meet you dead. Oh, my fair warrior. I prattle of the fashion, I go to my own compass. Worthy Montano, your pardon, sir. But Michael, look you to the guard tonight. Come, my dear love. Once more. Well met in Cyprus. Did you get it? Who the warrior? I didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. No. Who came? Who came from below? He did. He did. He did, didn't he? Yeah. Who was prattling out of fashion, like 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 some nervous, low status person? He was. He was. Very interesting. Um, in the end, it's him who, who who escorts her off. But again, you could see that as being like a good servant to someone who is in charge. Very interesting. Uh, if we go on, we see, we see that um, we see the same ambiguity happening. Um, it's not so clear cut at all um, who is the high status one, because it seems like the warrior, the high status one, um, Othello, in the, in this scene, is only so because he's abusing those qualities of the chariot. He's becoming demanding, menacing, <coughs> assertive. Whereas Desdemona, she does have that ability to be um, assertive and strong. And she demonstrates it in this scene. Uh, she's speaking up for Cassio, who has been, uh, who has been sacked by Othello. Cassio was Othello's uh, lieutenant. And uh, Othello is the general, general of the service of Venice. Cassio was his lieutenant. She's friends with Cassio, and she asks um, Othello to reconsider, to give Cassio back his, his place in his, in his army. Um, and she's both gentle and she's um, assertive at the same time in his favour. She's very, very balanced, and he is very unbalanced as a, as, as a chariot. Give me your hand, he says in a very demanding way. And in, in, in response, she is um, gentle, she says, uh, she does so. She says, was that hand that gave away my heart. And then she, um, <coughs> she continues to press, for the, press, for her, press her suit, which is the case of reinstating Cassio. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. So she's very respectful, she's very gentle, very polite, but at the same time, she wants to achieve something here. She's service giving and she's ambitious. Both dualities together. He becomes even more of a chariot, quite menacing, because he has been worked upon by Iago. He's no longer the same humble warrior that he was before, or humble star. He's now become uh, a menacing, threatening chariot. Where is the handkerchief? He's very jealous. And he thinks he's, he's jealous of her and Cassio. And she's done what exactly makes him, made him most jealous. 
she's mentioned Cassio and she's trying to help him. She continues to press her suit. This is a trick, my lord. Pray you let Cassio be received again. So, so um, star and chariot together, so balanced. He becomes even more menacing, he becomes quite aggressive, and looks, fetch me the handkerchief. Go on. <laughs> When and how do you feel humble? You know, what, what makes you feel you're going out in the world and, and what makes you feel strong like a conqueror um, and, able, and able to uh, stand your ground as well? And what makes you feel uh, like you are simply doing your duty in a, in a low status, humble way? Think this is um, that plays how Iago made him change to Othello's character, made him jealous. Yeah. Perhaps we should watch this every before we vote. Or... Uh, well, no, because that's too complex. Okay. I, I'm only focusing on the duality in question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm, only, uh, I'm only asking you now if, if, you, have, if you want to share anything. Why did Othello listen to Iago? He was such a cruel man. Why did he? He exploited a weakness in the character of Othello. He, he wasn't, he wasn't um, properly balanced between the chariot and the star. Instead of becoming vulnerable, or instead of, um, instead, instead of being able to turn from being strong and outgoing to being settled and calm and virtuous, he, he tried to become even stronger and full of rage, which he, which he couldn't control, actually. The chariot when it's out. Why did he believe Iago? <coughs> That's another question. Iago was uh, very, very evil and mischievous, and he knew how to turn their virtues against them, yeah. which he did in this case, with both characters. So, we have now the next uh, duality, which is awareness. Do we have. Um, uh, for awareness now, we need a um, justice card and the moon card, which is our mental logical awareness and our emotional intuitive awareness. We, we, we have to judge situations, um, how we see them. And this brings up uh, a, a terrific 
difficulty with this particular duality, which is what is the what is the opposite of appearance? Yeah, we see a, we see a situation, we see a person, how we see them, which is our the appearance that they they give to us. So, what is the opposite of that? The reality of how that person is. Hamlet says there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Okay. So what he's saying is that um, everything is perception. So what is the opposite of appearance? Perception. <coughs> or, is, or is it reality? It, it's, it, it, you cannot find, in the end, you, op you, 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 you end up with perception on both sides of the duality. It's a very slippery, it is very changeable, it's impossible to, to properly pinpoint what, is, what the opposites are here. And it's become even more so since quantum physics said that the observer affects the observed. Yeah. And we, this play, Hamlet, um, dramatizes this uh, impossibility of, of separating the two poles to a quite dizzying extent. Mm. They, they do become inseparable throughout this play, and particularly in the scene that we're going to look at. Um, on one side, we should, we should have truth, observation, reason. On the other side, um, we, what we end up with is, fault, is what, what, we, what, what, what we end up with is um, the ability to the, the, sorry, the impossibility of separating it, the opposites from truth, from observation, from reason. We get falsity, spying, passion, reason and passion mixed up together. We cannot separate them. It's, it's even very hard to, for me to explain. Um, but let's have a, look at this, let's have a look at the scene and let the scene explain it for us. In the first, in the beginning, we have Orphelia, who is the girlfriend of Hamlet, who has been, um, who has been kind of persuaded into the service of the king and Polonius to trap Hamlet so that they may spy on Hamlet speaking with Ophelia to find out if Hamlet really is mad. We will bestow ourselves. This happens before the clip starts. So they're behind the curtain observing Hamlet speaking to Ophelia. Hamlet enters and straight away is very, very suspicious. He's, he's, he's not only observing, he's actually being very suspicious. And he, 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 he has, a, he has a clue that they are being watched. So again, you don't quite know whether you're on the justice side or the moon side. And then they, they speak with each other, and she returns some keepsakes that he's given her. His reaction, because she wants to end the relationship, his reaction is to demand, are you honest? So here we have the justice theme coming up, honesty. And he presses his point, where's your father? The father, as I've just told you, is behind the curtain, watching them. She tells a lie, and she says, at home, my lord. So, um, truth and falsity comes up here, because should she be true to her father spying, because she said that she will, or should she be, be true to Hamlet and telling the truth? Yeah? It's, it's a great confusion here. And then, he becomes, he, he just flies off the handle, he becomes enraged with her, because he knows that she's being dishonest or trying to deceive him, and the, the, the cry, get thee to a nunnery, takes over and um, gives this famous scene its name, the nunnery scene. But is he, being, is he being prescriptive, morally prescriptive, or is he being morally judgmental? One would be the justice card, the other would be the moon card. Judgmental shows, shows kind of a lack of morality, a lack of um, integrity, whereas being prescriptive is much more to, just, uh, to do with justice. In the end, he becomes quite hysterical, and we don't really know whether he's in a state of reasoned passion or passionate reason. He hath made me mad. Remember. Good, my lord. 
How does your honor for this many a day? I have to thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long begun to re-deliver. I pray when I receive them. No, not I. I never gave you what. My honor, God, you know as well you did. And with them words of so sweet but composed, it made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take leave again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Fair, my lord. Are you honest? My lord. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent honest, but yet I would accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, more offences at my back than I had thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between heaven and earth? We are out of Lord, believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. <laughs> Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may bring a fool no weapon in his own house. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. It's a bit falling. Do you ever feel, you know, you're, you're much more one than the other, for example? I think you've been logical all the way, but in my emotional, emotion over the top of it. But there's logic there all the way. There's logic all the way and there's emotion. Sometimes yeah. it's very hard to separate them, to discern yeah. which is.